John chapter 4. And it reads in verse 46. John chapter 4, verse 46. He went again to Canaan of Galilee, where he had turned the water into wine. There was a certain royal official whose son was ill at Capernaum. When this man heard that Jesus, come on somebody, he heard about Jesus, had come from Judea into Galilee. He went to him and pleaded with him to come down and heal his son since he was about to die. Jesus told him, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Well, we're in week two of our series called The First Day of Forever. And how many believe once you have an encounter with Jesus, your life will never be the same, amen? And when Jesus stepped into your life, did your life stay the same? Am I preaching to anybody in the room right now? So we're going to be going through the book of John and unpacking the various miracles that Jesus did leading up to the resurrection. And Easter Sunday is right around the corner. And we see here in John chapter 4, this is the second miracle that, that Jesus demonstrated, the signs, wonders, and miracles. But, but Jesus says something very interesting in, in, in scripture verse 48. It says, Jesus told him, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will not believe. This is very interesting because normally if you study the scriptures, faith teaches us not to walk by sight. Faith teaches us to trust Jesus even though I don't see it. We move in faith, but, but Jesus is setting up something interesting right here. And he's saying you won't believe until you see it. And I believe this family, give me grace, give me justice. I believe God loves us so much. There are some things in our life God knows that we just need to see a little bit of glimpse of it so that we can go the extra mile. Come on, somebody. I don't know what season that you are in right now, but here's what grace does. It shows us the fruit that's already in our life and it begins to pull us into the next. I believe God wants to show you something, a journey that you're on right now. God wants to show you something. If I can give you a message title right now, if you're taking notes, write this down. Sight sin. It's time to go sight sin. It's time to go hit to see what Jesus can do. Heavenly Father, we love you. We honor you. We thank you for what you're doing in this place right now as we receive your word, even in this moment right now. Open our eyes, open our ears, but open our hearts. We receive you in a special way in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody shout amen. 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 Go ahead and have your seats, family. Family, being a Washingtonian, come on, any Washingtonians in here today? Come on, talk back to me, locals. You are always hearing about people traveling to Washington, D.C. to come visit. I mean, Washington, D.C. is a very beautiful place. Amen. I, 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 just growing up, I've always heard countless of stories of individuals even using their life savings to travel to Washington, D.C. to see the beautiful monuments to see and visit the beautiful museums, all based on what they heard, they had to go travel the distance to see the very thing that they've been hearing about. So they would use their life savings, they would jump on a plane, they would carve out time and, and jump on stuff that we see each and every day that can become mundane to us. People would travel across the world to come see about it all based on what they heard. See, see, people would do whatever they need to do, especially if they want to get there. It doesn't matter if you are desperate to get somewhere, you would do whatever you need to do to get there. Am I, am I preaching to anybody right now? 
Because there, here's what I learned. Here's what I learned, Julius. That, that desperate situations will, will cause you to do stuff that you would normally wouldn't do, but you will go to the ends of the earth to get it done if you are in a desperate situation. See, see, a lot of us, come on, oh, I'm getting ready to go into your BC days, your before Christ days. There's a lot of us who have traveled the wrong journey sometimes. Based on a desperate situation, we, we, we were trying to look for the fix. Come on. But we didn't come across no fix. And then we, so we, we were desperate, and sometimes desperate situations were what caused you to go down the wrong road. See, see, this is a beautiful thing because as we're unpacking the scripture right now, the, the, the role you official, this, this leader, as I'm getting ready to unpack, this leader is sitting at the feet of Jesus. He's coming into contact with Jesus. This is a role you official. Let, let, let me, let me teach, teach the text a little bit. In other words, he's a significant individual. He has value in his community. And in one room, come on somebody, in one room he has power, in one room he has status, in, in one room when he comes in, things begin to change. In one room, if there's a question, he has the answer, but this is the same person, same status, going into a different room, and he does not have the power to change the very thing that he needs to be changed. I, I want to preach a word right now. I want to preach a word to somebody, same person, different status, but no power. Yeah. You could be winning in one room and go to the next room and be defeated. Come on, somebody. You could be winning. Oh, I want to go there this morning. You could be winning on your nine to five and then go home and be losing. Come on, somebody. Or vice versa. You could be winning at home and then go to work and all hell is breaking loose. Same person. Same status. Different power. What do you do? Oh, oh, come on. What do you do when you're winning in one room, but you're losing in the other? Well, what do you do when, 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 when you know how to move and, and answer certain questions, but in this specific thing, am I preaching to somebody, it's been this specific thing, God. I, I've been praying. I, I've been fasting. I've been doing whatever I need to do, but I can fix that over there. But this right here, I seem to not get my mind right around it. It won't change. I can feel this royal official right now. I know how it is even to be a leader. Can I be a transparent? I know how to, to be a leader. You can walk into a room and feel powerful, but then you can walk into another room and feel weak. So they go, go, well, why can't I fix this? Well, I've been praying for this, and this will not change. And, and desperate situations, ah, I'm going to keep hitting that point. Because desperate situations will, will cause you to, to, to leave one place where you have power to go find out about Jesus. Desperate situations, this is a royal official. Hear me when I say this. He actually had to lower himself, leave Capernaum, and travel down, matter of fact, travel up to Cana. In other words, he left his place of status to actually go find out about Jesus. And he left his place of power. Let, 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 me, let, me, let me touch on it a little bit. He left his place of power. He left his place of, of, of being notary. He left his place of, of having value. He left his place of having status. He left his place of where people knew about him to go see and hear about Jesus. Mm, could it be that this man, this, this individual, could, could it be that he had to lower himself? Could it be that sometimes pride stops us to go to see what, what Jesus can do? Yeah. Can, can, can you imagine? He actually, if you study the scripture, he traveled almost 20 miles to go find out about Jesus because he was desperate. 
I just wonder sometimes what pedestals we can be on that we won't lower ourselves or even become vulnerable before Jesus to say, Jesus, I need you. I'm desperate. I know I'm powerful in one room, but I've been struggling with with this for way too long. I'm desperate. Can you touch me? Can you heal me? Can you move in my life right now? Traveling almost 20 miles. Can you imagine the the thought process of what he was going through while he was traveling in the road? My son is dying. Tried everything. I touched, I reached out to everybody. My resources are dying. I I don't know what I'm going to do. My my family is dying. I I don't know what I'm going to do. My business is dying. I don't know what. If I stay on this road long enough, I'll come right to your front porch because I know I'm preaching to the room right now. There could be certain things in your life that you tried every single remedy. But my question to you right now, have you tried Jesus? Traveling the road on the way. Based off, based on just what he heard. He didn't see it yet. He just heard it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he didn't see the movement yet. He didn't see the miracle yet. He, he didn't see the eyes opening yet. He didn't see the water changing into wine. All he had was just the rumors and, and, and the noise about what Jesus can do. And here's what I'm preaching right now. Maybe that's you right now. You didn't see the miracle move yet. And all you have is the rumors of what Jesus can do. But I'm here to tell you, Jesus is in your neighborhood. Amen. Oh, Jesus is in your neighborhood. And when you come to see what Jesus can do, Jesus can touch you in a mighty way. Does anybody believe that right now? Does anybody believe that right now? I, 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 I want to I I keep touching this role. You official because this is powerful because he's in a moment of highs while he's also in a moment of a low. He's in a moment of having great wisdom, but now he's in a moment of being ignorant to something that he cannot fix. He's in a moment of having some wins, but he's also in a moment of having some some losses. See, see, what do you do when you're living in a journey of this season of your life where you have some wins over here, but you can't figure out the losses over here? Am Am I preaching to anybody right now? I got, I'm here every Sunday. God, I'm fasting. I'm praying. God, I've been on a 7 a.m. call. Come on. God, I lost an hour of sleep, but I'm still here on a Sunday morning. God, help me right now. I got some wins over here, but I got some losses right here. And I don't know what to do, but I'm willing to do whatever I need to do, even if that means traveling many miles to come see about you. I want to preach to some desperate people in here right now. I I, want to preach to some desperate people right now who need God to move in their life, who need God to touch their mind, who need God to touch their heart. I don't know who I'm preaching to. I've been feeling a hurt burning. I've been feeling a hurt all week, and I felt it this morning, and you've been on a journey, but I'm here to tell you right now that God is getting ready to release a word in your mouth that's getting ready to touch you and your family, but he just wants you to go the extra mile to see about him. Oh, is is anybody in here? Come on, talk back to me right now. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want that next step? How bad do you want your God to move in your life? How bad do you want your son to be saved? How bad do you need God to move in your mind today? God, I'll go the extra mile. I'll leave. I'll throw it. I'll get rid of the status. I don't need the royalness. I don't need none of that. I need my son to be healed. Is there anybody in here who needs God to move in their life? I'm here. I come, God. Oh, here we go. Here I come, God. I'm coming right now. I'm coming right now, God. Am I preaching to anybody right now? Am I preaching to anybody right now? Because I believe desperate situations, yeah. If you ever been so desperate, you don't care what people think about you. You ever been in a desperate situation, I don't care what you think about me. 
I don't care if you see me crying in here. I don't care if you see me looking crazy. Yeah, I get that church cry. Come on, you know that church cry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you can look around the room. Yeah, yeah. They, they in a desperate situation. I don't know what's going on in their life. I don't care if you see this desperate, ugly cry when you need God to move in your life. I don't care what nobody thinks about me. I need you to move, God. I don't care if you judging me. I don't care if you looking on my IG, seeing what's going on in my life. I need God to move. I will do whatever I need to do to get to God so he can release his word. I just wonder, have you not been vulnerable enough with God because you keep judging what you're going through based on what people think about you? So so sometimes we cover what we're going through because we don't want so-and-so to know about it. So sometimes we stay in prisons long, too long enough because we don't want anybody to know if they find out about that. Oh, my gosh. If they if they hear about that, I I wonder what they're going to think about me. If they see that I have money issues, I I wonder what they're going to think about me. If they see that my, my marriage is struggling or, 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 or that I'm a divorcee or, or, or if I'm going through this health problem or, or if my kids are, are, are having issues in school and whatever it could be, I, I just wonder, are you going to Jesus about it? It's royal you official. Didn't care. I, I, need you to, I need you to catch that. He's a royal official. Jesus does not have high status or high value, famous right now. Jesus is early on in his ministry. So, so, so understand that what he's releasing to go, to go find out about Jesus shows a lot, of, a lot about his humility. That I'm willing to release this to grab hold and touch the Messiah. I just wonder what you are not releasing in your life right now so that you can grab hold of the Messiah. And even if I teach it correctly, he did not fully know that Jesus was the Messiah at the point of his release. He actually had to release it and step in obedience after the word was released and believe the word. And after he believed the word, he came in contact of knowing this is indeed the Messiah. I just wonder how long you've been in that prison because you won't release what God is telling you to release. Because this individual is on a journey. This man is on a journey. He, he went sightseeing. Mm. He went sightseeing. See, see, could it be that this season of your, your life right now could it be that you're, that God is calling you to go sightseeing? That, that God is actually calling, you may not like this segment of your journey, but sometimes God sends you down certain road so that you can actually go what? Sightseeing. See, so you wouldn't plan out this portion of your life. You, you, you wouldn't plan out, ooh, this interruption in your life. Did this, uh, we don't know. I, I love the scripture. We, we don't know how long the boy was ill. Scripture doesn't tell us. But it is indeed an interruption. It, it is indeed a. I, I want to speak to the interruption in your life. I, I want to speak. How, how do you navigate interruptions in your life? That's a class I need right now. Because you can never fully plan for an interruption. You can do whatever you need to do, but you can never fully plan for an interruption. The only thing that you can do is navigate your way through it well. So how do you navigate? Because this is an interruption. This is an interruption, and and he's going through an interruption. This is an interruption on the outside that can affect what's going on in the inside. Yeah, good God Almighty. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interruptions can come from the outside, but it begins to affect what's going on in the inside. Uh, How many of you going through something right now where something's happening to you that you had no control of, but it's an interruption on the outside and it begins to affect what's down on the inside? Because now I didn't plan for this interruption, but this interruption seems to have me off course. I didn't plan for this interruption. I I had dreams. I I had vision. I I had plans. And now this interruption has come in my life, and it begins to get me off course. It's affecting my mind. It's affecting my sleep. It's affecting my eating habits. I'm going there. It's affecting my relationships. It's affecting me dreaming about what's next because I'm caught thinking about an interruption. We don't know how long the boy was ill. All we know is that this father, a royal official, is walking through an interruption. So I want to talk about the interruption because I believe this. And here's what God told me to tell you, tell you today. How you handle this season with care would dictate how you walk into your next season. How how you handle, yeah, yeah, put that label on that box of your season right now. Handle this with care. God God is saying, I I need you to handle this with care. And and I need you to handle, don't mishandle this, because could it be that what, what you're handling right now is actually leading you down the road to go sightsee? It's, it's actually leading you down the road to go sightsee. Because if this father, oh, yeah, here we go. If this father's son did not get ill, he would have never came into contact with Jesus. And when he came into contact with Jesus, I'm going to get ready to teach the text. Yes, the boy got healed, but the family got healed. Wow. Wow. Mm-mm-mm. All right, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Go, 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 go study the text. Could it be that this part, uh, the part portion of your life right now, sometimes we get stuck in a chapter and not move on to the next chapter. Sometimes we get stuck in, in a chapter of our life, not knowing that God has many more chapters for us to read. Many more chapters that you're going to win. Many more chapters that you're going to get great fruit. Many more chapters that you're going to be blessed. Many more chapters where you're going to see what God is going to do in your life. But but, but we're stuck here dealing with the interruption. So so you can either either keep stirring at the interruption, or you can get up and go see about Jesus. You can either sit here and say, boy, I don't know what else. I tried everything. I, 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 tried, I, I tried to do everything. I don't know what else to do. I'm trying my best. I, I, I just don't know what else to do. Or you can sit there and worry because remember I said last week, you can either give weight to worship or you can give weight to worry. And, and here's, what, here's what the father probably been doing. He's been giving weight to worry. But when you have come so desperate, where you, you have been so desperate for Jesus to move in your life, I'm not going to give more weight to that. I need to go see about Jesus. I, 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 I've been hearing some things. And so this is how I, I, I want to teach you real quick. And I'm going to move quick because I don't know what you're handling right now that you need to handle with care, but I, I do know what you need to do. And here's what I normally do. When, when an interruption pops up in my life, it's like, a, it's, like, it's like a pop-up ad. You know when you're on, you're, on, you're on a website and a pop-up ad pops up and they put that little X right in the corner where you can't seem to click? And it's just like, why is it so small? Because when, 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 when these pop-up interruptions come, sometimes what I do, I, sh- I, can, I struggle with this too, I, I, I can do what I call, it, it's really like reverse gratitude. A po- a, an interruption pops up and here's what I do. I, I begin to do reverse gratitude. I, I, I begin to think about all the things I don't have. I, I begin to think about all the things I can't do. I begin to compare myself. I even do this on Sundays. We, we can have a beautiful service. Souls getting saved. Families getting, getting changed. God is moving in here. And I can get in my car and drive home and begin to beat myself down comparing 
or I, got, I messed up a word that affected the whole service. And God is like, Anthony, get over yourself. Reverse gratitude. God moved, but, but, but something happened that called you, that causing you to not go into the movement of gratitude, but have reverse gratitude. So you begin to compare yourself. You begin to think about everything that you don't have. You begin to think about everything that you're trying to do that you can't do. And here's what God is saying. God is saying you have to learn how to push pause. Push pause. Push pause and put your mind on Jesus. So here's what I do. Here's what I do when the interruption pops up. Here, here's, here's my go-to. My go-to is this, is to start thanking God for what's already in my life. So here's it simple. Here's what I do. Father God, I thank you for my beautiful wife. Man, God, I thank you for Pastor Brenda. Well, I don't call her Pastor Brenda in my, in my prayer. God, I thank you for my babe. <laughs> God, 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 I thank you for my babe. Man, that's the love of my life, God. Man, God, I love her. Father God, I thank you for, man, my three boys. Yes, they get on my nerves sometimes, God. They're eating up all my food. But I love them because if they wasn't here, man, what would my life be like? Man, God, I love my kids. Man, God, I love my family. Man, God, I pray over my family. I start praying over you guys. I pray over the church. And I, I just start praying for things that's already in my life. It's already in my life. And so as I'm praying, God begins to open my eyes to the fruit that's already here. See, one of the things that we struggle with when interruption comes, interruption, and when interruption comes, it begins to blind you to the fruit that's already in your life. So now you don't even see the fruit that's here. You start looking over there. You start looking over other people's yards and, and seeing what they're doing. And, and that's what gratitude does. It pulls your attention away from the noise and pull your attention to appreciation what's already here. How you handle with care is important. This is very, this is very important because I believe gratitude, gratitude is it, like your snow tires in a blizzard. It keeps, you, it keeps you grounded while you're going through a blizzard. I, maybe this interruption has been a blizzard to you right now. It's just been a blizzard. And you want the, you want the snow to stop, and it seems like it's not stopping. <laughs> it just seems like it's not getting better. Here's what I'm telling you to do. Put on your boots called gratitude <laughs> and buckle down. Sometimes God is not going to change it. Sometimes God is going to change you. And that's the truth. Sometimes we want God to change what's going on around us, and God is actually trying to change you. Sometimes God will bring certain things in our life, not to change the environment, but to touch you in a mighty way. Because God needs to get your attention so that you can do what? Believe. Could it be that this, this royal official needed to go down his path because he needed to see Jesus in a special way? I don't know what season of, of life you're in right now, but hear me today, my friend, put on your shoes called gratitude. If you're taking notes, I'm getting ready to close quick. Is that okay? My first point is this. Take your time. We'll be here till 2 o'clock. Just playing guess. My first point is this, gratitude is the only way through. Gratitude is the only way through. Gratitude is going to help you grow through this, my friend. God wants, to, God wants you to grow through it, not just go through it. Hear me when I say that. God wants you to grow through it, not just go through it. Gratitude is learning to access what you already have while believing for what's next. That's what gratitude does. It begins to allow you to access what's already in your life so that you can grab hold of what's next. Gratitude helps you see the blessing. Hear this when I say this. Gratitude is just not for the heart, it's for your eyes. Gratitude is not just for the heart, it filters your eyes so that you can see the fruit. There's fruit in your life. There's fruit. God has already been moving in your life. Yes, God is going to touch that, but the boy's already here. God is going to touch that, 
but your life is already here. God is going to touch that. Come on, somebody. God is going to touch that. I, I know you're in a waiting season, but how you wait dictates how you're going to receive. So handle this season with care. Go sightseeing this week. I put that in my notes. Go sightseeing. Here's what I mean. Stop being grateful what God has already did in your life. Maybe I told you a few months ago, I think it was in, back in January, pull out your gratitude journal and get back to writing. That's just not a January 1st thing. That's an everyday thing. Because, because you, 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 need, you need to see because you're in a waiting posture. I'm in a waiting posture. I'm believing for God to do some more things. But how I wait, I can only wait with a pure heart through the posture of gratification. God, I'm so grateful what you're already doing. I'm going to invite the team back onto the stage. My second point is this. Gratitude is contagious. Hear me when I say this. Gratitude is just not for you. Yes, you're going to grow through this, but gratitude is contagious. I'm going to invite you to stand to your feet. John chapter 4, verse 53. Watch this, family, as you're standing up. The father realized this was the very hour at which Jesus had told him, your son will live. Somebody say live. So he himself believed along with his whole household. Mm, let me read that again. Your son will live, so he him, himself believed along with his whole household. This is powerful. This is powerful. I said it earlier. Could it be that this, this season of your life, this journey that you're on, is actually bigger than you? Could it be that this, this detour that came in your life could it be that it's actually bigger than you? Could it be that God actually wants to touch you so you can go touch somebody else? Could it be that God wants to use this season, this testimony, that he's going to move, that he's going to do it? And could it be that God wants to take this right now and actually apply it to something else so that somebody else can see that he is indeed the Messiah? Sometimes, hey, here's what I got to tell myself, Anthony, don't take it personal. Don't take it personal what's happening to you because maybe God wants to move through you to touch somebody else. And sometimes we can get very personal. God, why is this happening to me? And God is saying, why not? <laughs> why, why not you? Because I can trust you, my daughter. Why not you? Because I know I, I can trust you, my son. Why not you? I, I just wonder, is there anybody in here who loves God so much that no matter what we go through, we know God is, will never leave us or forsake us, that his hand is always on us. So God, if you have to use me as an example just to get to somebody else so that they can believe and confess that you are the Messiah, God, you are smarter than I am. I know you won't never give me more than what I can bear. God, move in an impactful way. Because sometimes you have to go through so that you can believe and somebody else can believe. As I get ready to close, watch this family. They're going to put it on the screen. Verse 50, it said, go, Jesus told him, mm. your son will live. The man believed what Jesus said to him and departed. Go. That's what he said. He, go. Just go back. Trust me, when you get there, it's not going to be the same. Watch this family. And I promise I'm getting ready to close. I'm turning into one of them preachers that say I'm getting ready to close like four or five times. <laughs> but it just hit me. It just hit me. Because all this individual this man had was a word from God. All he had was just his word. He didn't have any other proof that, 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 that his son was actually going to be healed. Matter of fact, he didn't even make it back yet to actually put eyes on the interruption. 
All he had was a word. And based on the word, the scripture says that he believed. I just wonder, am I talking to anybody that's in here right now, that's in the middle of their journey and all you have is a word? You, you don't have anything else. You want something else, come on. You want, you want a little bit more proof, but all you have is his word. You are, all you have is God is saying, I'm going to do this for you. All you have is God is saying, I'm going to touch your family. All you have is God is saying, I'm going to heal your heart. All you have is God is saying, that I'm going to touch your mind. I know you've been battling with depression. I know anxiety has been overwhelming you. And all you have is a word from God. And here's what he did. He believed. He believed. I, I just wonder how much more do you need in order to believe? I, I just wonder, do, do, do we need more proof? And God is saying, is my word enough for you to believe? Is my word enough for you to believe that I am indeed the Messiah? Is my word enough? Is my word enough? Because here's his word. His word would never come back to him void. His word has power. His word is living. His word is still sharper than a two-edged sword. His word still delivers. I, I, I can't shake this right now because you want more and God is saying, is my word not enough? You want more, but God is saying, my word is more than enough. My word created the heavens and the earth. My word opened up our dead man's eyes. My word raised the dead man from the dead. My word touched the blind man. My word been touching your life. Is my word not enough? His word is still powerful. His word is still moving. His word still has strength. His word still saves. His word is still moving. His word is still changing your life. Am I preaching to anybody right now who's in a waiting season and God is saying stand on my word stand on my word his word never fails you serve a God who word never fails is my word not enough for you my daughter I moved in your life before I'm going to move again I prayed that God would do it again do it again, God. Do it again. All hands stretched across the building. And I want to take this moment to pray for, maybe you're going through an interruption right now. You didn't plan for this. It's an interruption. But I believe that God can take an interruption and touch an entire family. So Heavenly Father, we honor you, we love you, we thank you. As we pray right now for the individual that's in the room or online that's going through an interruption, they didn't plan for the interruption, they didn't know the interruption was coming, but they're desperate to see about you. That they're going sightseeing this week, Lord God, to, to see about you. Father God, we know that they can travel to many other sources, but those are resources. You are the only source. You are the living source to the air that they breathe. So we pray right now that you will give them strength, Lord God, that you will give them clarity and revelation. Father God, we ask that you touch them in a mighty way. You act, we pray that you will give them more wisdom in this season that even strength and clarity to grab hold of gratification. Let gratification be the very fuel that they drink this week, to give them the strength to walk another step and believe another step, Lord God. And as we just learned, your word will never fail us. Your word will never fail us. We honor you in this time. And even in this posture right now, as we stay into worship, there's no better way to 
respond to the message than to run to Jesus and give your life to Jesus. So as we stay in this posture, all, all heads are bowed, all eyes are closed. May, maybe that's you right now. We've been talking about our relationship and, and maybe God is speaking to you right now and about your relationship with him. And maybe God is calling you back home to say, hey, it's time to rededicate. It's time to come back home. It's time to come see about me and see what I'm getting ready to do in your life. If that's you right now, I want to, we're going to invite you into a special time of prayer, the prayer of salvation. And just so I know who I'm praying with, come on, just stretch your hands. You can do that. Just stretch your hands to heaven. And we're going to pray for you. And this moment is all for you. Come on. Run back to Jesus like you have never ran back to Jesus before. The greatest decision you can give God is give him your yes. So we're going to say this. Family, let's repeat these words after me. Jesus, I repent. And I'm a sinner. I confess, I believe that you are indeed my Lord and Savior. Live in me, move in me, direct me, fill me up with your presence. We love you. I love you in the name of you. Somebody say Jesus. Come on, somebody put your hands together. Come on, put your hands together. Oh, come on, can we do a little bit better than that? Amen, 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 amen. Go ahead and have your seats, family. Amen. Amen. We're going to stay in this posture of worship with the returning of our tithes and the giving of our offering. I'm going to invite the ushers to the front. And the different ways to give are going to be right there on the screen. And what better way, what better way to worship God through your giving we love, we love to carve out this time to say, hey, God, we want to be obedient with the returning of our tithes, but also be obedient through being a cheerful giver. What better way through worship? Worship shows God so grateful for the seed that you have given us. We release it back. Despite the interruptions, we still want to worship you, God, in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. If you need a given envelope, just wave your hands. The usher would love to serve you in. We're going to take this time to go ahead and pray over the offering. You have your given envelope or even hold your phone and we want to ask God to bless us. So Heavenly Father, we honor you. We love you. We glorify your name even for the seed that we have right now. We worship you with this, Lord God. We're so grateful for the seed that you're getting ready to multiply. As you're multiplying and you're not only blessing us, Lord God, but we believe that gratitude is contagious, that you're actually going to bless somebody else. So we're so grateful that you will use Celebration Church as a vehicle to touch so many families, to spread your good news, to spread your gospel. We will thank you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 As the ushers are passing, passing the basket to serve you guys, I just want to share a few announcements before we dismiss out of here. Come on, a few weeks ago, we talked a little, a little bit about our Sea Kids expansion. Come on, can we make some noise? For our Sea Kids expansion, if you're new here, Sea Kids is our celebration kids ministry. With Easter right around the corner, come on, the, the, the team, they're going to go ahead and put the slides on the screen and they're going to flip through. But we're looking to enhance the experience, guys, for our Sea Kids ministry in the classrooms. Come on, can we, can we just put our hands together for that? As we said earlier, we're, we're here to serve the generations. And what better way for us to come together as a family? We're going to be looking to actually purchase a few items definitely before Easter so that we can definitely serve you, your little ones, but also serve guests in, in, in the community even better. And family, what better way for you to serve the next generation? Here's how you can do it. Come pray with us. Definitely pray with us, but also I invite you to participate in the Bridge Campaign. That's where, if you have given to the Bridge Campaign, this is our first big initiative. This is our first initiative that we're going out to say, God, we love the next generation, but also, God, I want to be obedient and pour into the next generation so that they can take 
the, 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 the baton and go and do what you want them to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. Somebody say Easter Sunday. Come on, Easter Sunday. Come on. I told you last week, it is not in April, all right? It's in March. <laughs> It's in March, but invite, we would love for you to invite your family and your friends. We're going to have an awesome time. I'm telling you, the team is planning an incredible Sunday for you and your family. And I'm telling you, you want to be here. So invite, 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 invite. But we also believe this here at Celebration, that we're not just going to church, but we also have the opportunity to be the church to our community. So we have, we have a few different ways for you and your families to serve in this Easter season. Come on, they're gonna put the link up on the, on the screen for you guys, but we're partnering with ACS, that's Alexandria Community Shelter. We're gonna be partnering with them. So as you're buying your donations and all of that's on the Amazon wish list, but all of this is gonna go so that we can have a kit so that somebody can go and step into their next season. Here's how you can make a difference. Here's how you and your family, I, family, I just want us to rally around together and be a strong impact for ACS. Amen? Amen. So that somebody, yes, we want to feed them in a tangible way, but even through prayer, we believe that God is going to move in their life. Amen? Amen. And on a Saturday right before Easter, come on, March the 30th, we're going to be doing a neighborhood prayer walk. Come on, put our hands together for that. I believe this family, we always enter in with prayer. I believe we enter in, in prayer, so we're gonna be walking, meet us here at 10 a.m. to actually walk and pray over John Lewis and pray over the neighborhood, but we're just believing that God is getting ready to do something magnificent and miraculous on Easter Sunday. But we believe that begins with prayer. If you are a person of prayer, come on, invite your little ones out, and we're gonna walk the neighborhoods and pray, amen? Amen, amen, amen. And on, on Palm Sunday, we're actually going to be assembling all of the um, ACS kits so that we, we can actually go and give it to ACS right before Easter. Amen? Amen, amen. I'm going to invite you to your feet. That was a, quite a few announcements. I almost lost my breath there, guys. It's all right. You guys are good? Amen, amen, amen. I know it was a pretty long service, but it's a, a very impactful service. But I just open up your palms real quick. I want you to receive the benediction. Lord God, we love you so much. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you all this week and give you peace. Father God, we honor you. We thank you. We do all of this in the miraculous name of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen, amen. I love you guys so much. See you next Sunday.